Good morning. Welcome to Cortland United Church, those that are here as well as those that are joining us online. Congratulations for getting out into the cold. It's been a while, so it's good to see everybody. For our announcements today, on the back of your bulletin, upcoming activities, we have our special church meeting today. So everyone is invited immediately following worship. It's great to have our district superintendent, Nancy Tomlinson, with us to help us with that. Nancy, great to have you uh, back with us today. Uh, I also see that the elders are meeting after church. And so they're going to do their January meeting and the youth group uh, meeting on Wednesday. And then we are having our church board meeting coming up. And Nancy knows about all this. Our insurance uh, company that once was insurance is not insuring us is not anymore. And so we're going to have to figure out how to do that. So we'll do that on Thursday. So I hope people can make that and we'll do that over Zoom on Thursday. Um, and then I see the Cortland Museum lunch. Susan, what's, what's this? Tell us. Okay. Sounds wonderful. So we know where we're eating next, next Sunday. All right. Any other announcements we want to lift up at this time? If not, let's stand to greet one another. Make sure everyone feels welcome this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Is it on? Good morning. Psalm 139, verse 14 says, I praise you for I am awesomely, wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, and my soul knows this very well. If you take your green book and turn to number 3015, we're going to start out this morning by singing together how great you are. And if you're willing and able, would you please stand as we sing number 3015 in the Green Book. How great you are, how wonderful your ways, O oh God. So sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great you are, before the world you knew my name, you formed me, Lord, to worship at your feet. How great you are, how beautiful the glory of my King. How great you are, how great you are, as the mountains rise, my soul will rise and sing, how great you are, how great you are. 
mighty hand the sun, the moon, and the stars you hold in place. How great you are! Your boundless love has filled my life. I live now in the power of your grace. How The glory of my King, how great you are, how great you are. As mountains rise, my soul will rise and sing, how great you are, how great I've got somebody else up here helping me this morning. <laughs> we recruited somebody from all the way from Mickleman, Nebraska to come yeah. join us and sing this morning. So welcome August Miller, if you would, please. Yay, thank you. And if you turn to number 3019, let's continue by singing together, Bidden, Unbidden, number 3019. Whether I cry out your name, or I feel all alone ashamed You are not gone, you are there Whether I notice your hand In all the stars, the sea, the land Whether or not you are there in I know you are there, you are present always, again and again. If I, if I forget you, or join you in prayer, you are present always, forever. If I don't feel you around, there is no picture and no sound, I will believe you are there. Even on my darkest days, I will still sing a word of praise, I will believe you are there. Bidden, unbidden, I know you are there. You are present always, again and again. If I forget you or join you in prayer, you are present always, forever. Amen. 
turn to number 3011. Let's join in singing All My Days, number 3011. join together in the call to worship which is printed in the bulletin if you would respond in the bold print god knows each one of us personally and god loves each one of us come this day into the presence of god celebrate god's mercy and compassion Let us join together in the opening prayer. Awesome God, you knew us before we were born. You love us into life. Open our hearts and our spirits today to hear your word for us. And upon hearing the word, may we be convinced of our call to ministry and mission through the church. Bless us with your presence and with your powerful love, for we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, may we have the children and the youth please come forward for the children's sermon. Perfect. Okay. Uh, ages, how old are you guys? How old? How old? 11? 12? 12? Well, per per perfect ages. Okay, there was a guy in the Bible, and he was, we think, 11 to 12 years old, and his name was Samuel, and he was hearing God calling him to do things. If God called you to do something, would you do it? Yes. No. If God said, I want you to go scoop the walks, would you do it? If God said, clean your room? Yes. If God said, make supper? Yes. Maybe. Yeah, great answers. Yeah, so at your age, he was, he was hearing God pushing him. And when we say that, sometimes we hear voices. Sometimes it's a feeling inside. Sometimes we just want to be kinder and nicer to other people. And, and God's calling us to do amazing things. Our question is, do, do we listen? So today, we're going to listen from Samuel as he's going to try to help us listen and, and do amazing things. So I got uh, for your answers, and those are supposed to, like, smell good. So we'll ch those are chocolate. Chocolate. <laughs> 
They, they said stink, so I'm not sure if that's good or bad. So they're smelling. They smell like chocolate. I think they're supposed to. You can handle it? Yep, you sure can. There you go. All right, let's pray before we go back. Dear God, may we listen to you. Oh, man, thanks for coming up. There's suckers on the way back. If you take your hymnal and turn to number 394, let's join in singing, In My Life, Lord, Be Glorified, number 394 in the hymnal. scripture reading this morning comes from John chapter 1 verses 43 to 51 and if you'd like to follow along it starts on page 87 in the New Testament the next day Jesus decided to go to Galilee he found Philip and said to him follow me now Philip was from Bethsaida the city of Andrew and Peter Philip found Nathanael and said to him we have found him about about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, He is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God, you are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that, and I saw you under that fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The second reading comes from First Samuel, Samuel chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. And that's found on page 250 and 251. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli, and said, Here I am, you called for me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord again called Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not know that the Lord and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time. He got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. 
Now the Lord came and stood there calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, speak, for your servant is listening. This ends the readings. Thank you, Denise. President Franklin D. Roosevelt was getting tired of smiling as he stood in lines for these White House receptions. So one evening he had enough. As people were coming to the line to greet the president, he would say a line, he would say, I murdered my grandmother this morning. The first person said, how lovely. The second person said, well, I'm sure she deserved it. And as people went through the line, not really listening. Anybody see the Wonka movie yet? Yeah, Wonka's out. Uh, in the movie, Willy Wonka, they talk about every great thing in life started with a dream. And for Willy Wonka, he said, and I want you to hang on to yours. Every th great thing in life started with a dream and I want you to hang on to yours as we start a new year sometimes we do an awful lot to tear down each other's dreams isn't it interesting we get to the new year and we start to come up with resolutions or new things that we might want to do or say and then after about three four weeks for some reason they they kind of go away um you know, we, we have big dreams of, you know, lose weight, save more money, get closer to God. And then how do we get the energy to help, help make that happen? Um, in our fairy tales that, that we read and we see, in the fairy tales there's usually someone that's trying to stop us from achieving our dreams. Um, the, the, the fairy tale of uh, Wizard of Oz, you know, we're always afraid of the Wicked Witch of the West, but it was somewhat the wizard that ended up not being who you thought it was going to be. So I started listing out, okay, all the fairy tales I could quickly come up with, and you tell me what movie these come from. Um, in the fairy tale, or in the story of Gaston, who's Gaston, which movie? Beauty and the Beast. Uh, Captain Hook? Yeah. Ursula? Corella DeVille? <laughs> Jafar? Scar? There's usually someone out there trying to keep you from your dream. Uh, there's a uh, uh, HBO is now Max. If you didn't know that, uh, on Max there's a there's a there's a award-winning show now called The Gilded Age, and it was uh, of a time period around uh, the 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 creating of the Brooklyn Bridge. The Brooklyn Bridge connected Manhattan and Brooklyn, and what made it so unique it was the first uh, steel cable wire sus suspension bridge. And what was so amazing is, is, is they had these population masses that could see from here to there. But how do you get from here to there? How do we hold on our dreams to get uh, Jacob's ladder in the Old Testament? Jacob saw things that no one had seen before because he'd been called by God. And, and I could, he could climb a ladder. There was a, uh, a Catholic magazine that talked about most Catholics have heard the voice of God and they're afraid to say it to anybody else because they think they'll be crazy. We use images of Jesus, of Jesus trying to get from here to there, and we come up with ways to say, okay, you know, that makes sense to me. We, Jesus is the gateway. Jesus is the light of the world. Jesus is the door. Jesus is the vine. I am the way, the truth, and the life. In some way, we try to get Jesus to be the one in some way to get us from where we are 
to where God may be in 2024 as we start out to be a very cold and snowy year to get us to places where God may want us to go next. The story today is of Hannah. Hannah. Hannah was feeling the call from God. Hannah was one of two wives. Now, don't get mixed up in that. That happened a lot in the Old Testament. Hannah was one of two wives, and the other wife was getting pregnant over and over again, and she was not. Now, just a trigger, a trigger in the Old Testament when that happens, something's usually about ready to happen. And so she was calling upon God because she wanted to have a child, just like the other wife And she was praying loudly to God, and Eli heard her, and he thought she was drunk. Another indication in the Bible when that happens. And she wasn't drunk, she was calling upon God, and she was praying for a child. And God heard her prayer and gave her Samuel. Samuel means, I begged to the Lord. Isn't that interesting? Because we do the same thing. When we pray, we beg to the Lord. She begged to the Lord, and she was given a son, and a son was named Samuel, and Samuel was in this house, and he was in the house with Eli, and Samuel in some way at the age of most of the kids that were sitting up here. And he felt something. He heard something. And he went to Eli, and he said, I'm right here. And Eli said, I didn't say anything. Went to Eli and said, I'm right here. I didn't say anything. And finally, Eli said to him, go back, lay down, and say, God, I'm listening. I'm listening. One of the greatest gifts we can give to the people that we love is to listen, not to answer, not to solve, not to respond. It's to listen. A lot of times when we think about faith, we think about coming to God with all the things that we have achieved and we have done and we have earned and these ideas that we have, This 11-year-old boy stopped and said, I'm listening. That's where our dreams come from. When we empty ourselves and we let God in, we dream. So in Willy Wonka, really, you should see it. In Willy Wonka, he lost his mother, and he was trying to come up with the best chocolate ever, a feat we are all in favor of. (laughs) And he had the magic beans, and he believed that if in some way he created the the best chocolate, he would see his mother again. That's a vision that he heard from her. What he discovered was it's not the chocolate. It's who you share it with. And at the end of the movie, he takes this piece of chocolate and like communion, he splits it. And he gives it. It's not the chocolate. It's who we share it with. On a cold January day, we are called by God to listen. And to me, I believe, to not do it alone. And we do that. 
we hear the voice of God. In some way, we see God. And in some way, we help others to do the same thing. In the name of Christ, amen. If you take your green book and turn to number 3112, let's join in singing Breathe. And if you're willing and able, would you please stand as we sing number 3112 in the green book. This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence living in me. This is my daily bread. This is my daily bread. Your very word spoken to me. And I, I'm desperate for you, and I, I'm lost without you. This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence living in me. This is my daily bread. This is my daily bread. Your very word spoken to me, and I'm, I'm desperate for you, and I'm, I'm lost without you. time we lift up the joys and concerns from our community of faith. Do we have joys and concerns you'd like to lift up at this time? Yes, Kay. Prayers for my sister. Sunday evening she called me and she said, is there anything to be concerned about? I cannot see out of my right eye at huh? all. Hmm. I said, yes, it's a possible eye stroke. You need to hang up the phone, call 911 if you want to call me back. That'll be fine. She did, she has, um, she did have an eye stroke. I, I've only known a couple other people that have had those, but it's basically where there's blockage in the carotid artery, breaks off, can go to the brain, but luckily it took a turn and went into her eye. Um, but she does have a blockage that they need to work on, but there's some other issues also. So just prayers for her, I think it's gonna be a journey. Uh, she did get to come home yesterday um, for six, she was in the hospital for six days, but because she has no eyesight on the right, she's knocking things over and it's becoming, you know, it's more difficult than I think she even thought it would be. Um, just prayers for Patricia, Patricia, or most of you know her as Patty. So, and that the doctors will have wisdom to know how to take care of the problems that are going on. Thank you, Kay. For Patricia, and where does she live in Lincoln? North Lincoln. North Lincoln, okay. Thank you. Other joys and concerns? Yes. Yeah.
Yeah. So for Mickey's aunt, it came out of surgery, but having issues after that. So uh, for recovery, thank you. Other joys and concerns. I went to see Evelyn Hale yesterday. She's in the memory unit in, uh, in Beatrice, and she wasn't there. And uh, she had fallen Friday night. So she fell Friday night, and she broke a hip. So she had surgery uh, yesterday in Beatrice, and she's currently in the Beatrice Hospital. Bonnie thinks she may go back to the memory unit for the rehab, and, uh, but for prayers for, for her, for Evelyn. Other joys and concerns. If not, then, let's prepare our hearts for prayer if John and Kay would lead us. We're singing number 2127 in the Black Book. be in an attitude of prayer. Let us pray. O God of all creation, help us to listen. We know you call our name. And as we hear these joys and concerns, oh God, we know we have a lot of work to do. May as we, your people, find ways to reach out and be in ministry, may we remember those that are around us in our prayers. May we be energized, oh God, by the gift of your Holy Spirit. And now as people who have been loved and forgiven, let us now all join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us now receive our tithes and our offerings.
Let us join together in the offertory prayer, which is printed in your bulletin. God, we have been made in your image, so in your generosity, make us generous. In your faithfulness, make us faithful, so that whatever gift we bring to you might be an offer of worship before you. Amen. If you turn to number one in the hymnal, let's close this morning by singing together, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee, number one in the hymnal. and then we're going to sing. I know there's some folks that need to run after this. The rest of you will then be seated and then we'll ask um, our president to come forward, Nancy to come forward, and then we'll do our uh, all-church conference stuff. Let us go forth knowing we are called by God to do amazing things and God walks with us. In the name of Christ, amen. Amen. 